Vizio has a brand new all in wonder soundbar. It promises the world, but is this thing any good? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and today I'm going to review for you the Vizio M-Series All-in-One, AIO for short apparently, soundbar. Model number M213AD. Good luck remembering that. Anyway, I can see this soundbar being hard to pass up as folks pass by it in stores. Like, I can see a mountain of these things on a pallet with a low price tag up top attracting a lot of attention from passers-by. You go in for that 48 roll value pack of toilet paper and walk out with a soundbar. Hey, stranger things have happened, I should know. On the other hand, I don't know, this might be a harder sell than Vizio thinks. With tons of off-brand soundbars out there, some of which even come with wireless subwoofers at the same price, Maybe it's not the no-brainer impulse buy it once was. That's not stopping Vizio from trying, though. I mean, this box has all the buzzwords, right? We've got HDMI EARC, Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, six speakers with dual built-in subwoofers. I mean, that's like all the things you want, all in one tiny little soundbar. And it's only about 200 bucks? How bad could it be? Well, I think the better question is how good could it be? And I asked that question because Vizio has flat out shocked me before. So I wouldn't put it past the brand to put a real banger in this box. We could be looking at the sleeper hit soundbar of the year, my friends. There's only one way to find out though. So let's get this thing set up and have a listen. Before I do the very important and arduous work of sitting in front of this black tube and watching a bunch of fun movie clips, I know it's a tough life. I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Appreciate you all. Please give us a like and subscribe if you think we deserve it. And leave me a comment down below about whether you think this soundbar is going to be a gas or a pass. Gas is like an old school term for lots of fun. You know what? Never mind. Let's check this thing out. So here's what you get for under 200 bucks. The soundbar, a remote, and even some cables. I mean, it's a one box deal, all right? So Vizio is delivering on that promise. And built into the soundbar are indeed six speakers and two passive radiators, two tweeters and two mid-range drivers firing from right here, and two subwoofers and passive bass radiators up here. Of course, that's if you put the soundbar down in front of a TV like this. If you wall mount it, it changes the orientation so that the mid-range drivers and tweeters are facing sort of up at an angle. That's kind of interesting. Now, Vizio tells me it uses DSP triggered by a gyroscope to alter the sound curve so it sounds right. And I'm curious how well that will work to keep the clarity going. Now, it's worth noting that there are no dedicated up firing Atmos drivers in here. Any Atmos effect is gonna have to be virtual. Now, I was hoping that the subwoofers up here were Atmos speakers, but as it turns out, when I looked at the driver configuration, those hopes were dashed. So we'll see how that goes. Now, you know, I'm surprised by one of the input options here. The first thing I noticed is that there are two aux inputs, one dedicated for a voice assistant, one for anything else you wanna connect. So your Amazon or Google smart speaker isn't going to take up your only aux input. And that's kind of cool. Now there is one HDMI input here if you want to route the source through the soundbar, though I think most folks should connect their devices directly to the TV unless they're experiencing some kind of audio lag that they can't get rid of. There's also a Bluetooth connection option. So you cycle through all these inputs with the remote and the only way of knowing which one you're on is by this LED indicator. The color code of which is on the back of the remote, which is fine until it wears off one day, but hopefully you either memorize the color code or replace the soundbar by then. Anyway, setup is a breeze. I'm using an HDMI cable attached to the eARC port of our TV here because if we want any kind of quality Atmos sound, even if it is virtual, we want it via eARC. Now, regular ARC will work for Dolby Atmos via Dolby Digital Plus, technically speaking, but since it's all virtual, it's hard to know exactly how much benefit we're gonna get out of an eARC port versus an ARC port. Now, before I just press play and see what happens, I wanna go into the audio settings portion of this TV and just make sure that eARC is activated. Sometimes you have to turn it on, as I have to do here, or select it specifically to override the TV's own speakers. And then I wanna make sure that Atmos is enabled, if that's even an option. It is here, but it was also already on. Sometimes it's all automated. Now, just to clarify, to get Atmos out of the EARC port, the TV has to support apps 
that deliver Dolby Atmos, and the TV has to deliver it via EARC or ARC. If your TV is newer and has an EARC port, then you should be good to go. If it says ARC, there's no guarantee that it will send Atmos out of the ARC HDMI port. You wanna check your TV specs to find out if you're concerned, but honestly, since we're talking about virtual Atmos, I'm not sure any of that's gonna matter much. But with this Samsung QN90B TV, we are good to go now. So, what am I gonna listen for? Well, a few things, but I'm also gonna keep in the back of my mind that this soundbar is under 200 bucks, so we've gotta keep that in perspective, right? So first thing I'm listening for is overall fidelity. Like, before we even get to whether the Atmos effect is any good, does the soundbar sound pretty good or is it trash? Then I wanna listen for dialogue clarity because if you can't hear the dialogue clearly, then you have failed as a soundbar, full stop. Then I wanna hear how much bass it could produce. Like, I know it's just one small bar, but I need some kind of oomph or you might go looking at one of those El Cheapo bars with a trashy subwoofer. And then yeah, if it says Atmos on the box, I need to hear some kind of Atmos effect. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to give you a hard time about printing that on the box. All right, now let's see what this thing can do. Okay, so at this point, I've given the M-Series All-in-One a thorough listen. And the first thing I've gotta say is, okay, Vizio, I see what you're doing. Now, I'll just cut to the chase here. This soundbar is doing some really impressive things for under 200 bucks. I can tell you that if I purchased the M-Series All-in-One, I would not only not be disappointed, I'd feel like I got way more than I paid for. With that said, I think you should know what to expect, what you're gonna get, and just as important, what you're not gonna get. First off, you will get impressive fidelity. Now, I'm not gonna give this soundbar the audiophile dissection treatment, but I kinda could because it sounds so good that I did lean in and start picking it apart. So just for this soundbar to be at that fidelity level was a shock to me. You will also get excellent dialogue clarity, and I do mean excellent. Every line of every movie and TV show I watched was delivered with superb articulation, diction, weight, and most importantly, intelligibility. Huge thumbs up for this soundbar when it comes to its virtual center channel performance. You will also get a respectably wide soundstage. There were times when I would have believed you if you told me the sound was coming from the Polk speakers placed well to the sides of the TV. I mean, it has impressive width. You're also going to enjoy surprisingly good dynamics. Like there's this scene early in Netflix's The Gray Man, worth a watch by the way, that does a hard cut from a really quiet scene to a car horn honking as it drives by. And even that made me jump in my seat a little bit because it was so unexpected. So dynamics, no doubt. As for bass, let's talk about that for a moment. It's got big bass, shockingly deep bass too. Like impress your friends with the big bass coming from the small box kind of bass. It far exceeds your expectations, but in fact, at times, it's a bit much. Like, I like moving bass, but, and I'm sure my room modes have something to do with this, but it definitely has a high mid bass peak to it that makes it sound like it's trying to sound bigger than it is at times. Fortunately, the bass level control allowed me to dial that back enough that I was pretty happy, so no deal breaker in the bass department. And I definitely didn't feel the need to run and grab a trashy subwoofer, no thanks. The one not so complimentary thing I have to say about the Vizio M-Series All-in-One is that I don't feel like it delivers on even a baseline expectation of Dolby Atmos. Look, I can't get into the dilution of the Dolby Atmos badge right now, that's another video, but I expected some virtual height effects and I did not get any, any. And honestly, that's fine with me. I didn't expect it to have been good anyway. And I'm actually happy that there isn't some distracting fake version of it muddying everything else up. The soundbar sounds great without that fake Atmos, but I'm not a fan of the expectation that's set up by it being printed on the box. I don't know if I should be displeased with Vizio or Dolby about this. Regardless, as long as you don't expect that dome of surround sound that you commonly associate with Dolby Atmos, at least I do, then you'll be absolutely fine because otherwise, this is a mind-blowingly good soundbar from Vizio. They did it again. Even though I had a sneaking suspicion they'd deliver, I was still surprised. So color me impressed. So if this soundbar looks like it might be right for you and the price is right for you, I say go for it. You will be pleased as punch once you get it up and running in your system. I certainly was. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Are you surprised by the M-Series All-in-One's performance? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and here's two other videos I think you might like.